Holdings second update on the coronavirus impact in our country with me, senior journalist Denver Kirsten. Good morning, Denver. Morning, Dani, and good morning to our viewers. I hope you managed to get some rest last night, Dani. Uh, I, I have to tell you, I had to take a sleeping pill. But, but Denver, what is new in terms of uh, local happenings? As far as lo local happenings are concerned, yesterday we reported, um, as per the information of the Ministry of Health and Social Services, that the two confirmed cases um, relate to a Spanish couple. What we've seen in the meantime, a statement by the Spanish embassy in Namibia that these people had been traveling from Madrid in Spain, but they're in fact from Romania. So I think it's important for us to share factually correct information as it unfolds. We haven't seen anything official from government's perspective as far as that's concerned. But should that surface, we'll definitely share it as it comes. Unfortunately, a bit of criticism from the public in that regard about uh, officials not getting their facts right. Also, we know a uh, helpline has been launched. The number is 0800 100 100. But we are receiving reports from people that the line is completely overloaded. You get the message that uh, the number is not available. And hopefully, uh, people are working on that as well. Absolutely. What we do know is it's, it's a toll-free helpline. So one can imagine that because people are concerned, people are worried that the calls are streaming into that number. But we also know that the person responsible for the number has given the indication that they're prioritizing it. And then also uh, yesterday already, parents uh, were very worried. We can tell you as we are speaking now, the Ministry of Education, their top officials, is having a meeting. And we expect later today, uh, if not a press conference, that there at least will be a public announcement in terms of whether schools will close or not. The international situation at the moment, we started off with that, yes, and, and since yesterday, Denver, it has changed again, obviously. Yeah, this is an unfolding, a developing picture, Dan, uh, Dani. As far as that picture is concerned, we do know that uh, the number of infected people now stands at 142,649, up from yesterday's 142,320 cases. Relating to the deaths, yesterday it stood at 5,388 and it's up with five. It's now on 5,393, Dani. Um, the countries affected yesterday we reported were 129. The latest figure is 135 countries. Yeah, so they have added six countries and we can tell you on that is the WHO interactive map at the moment. And Namibia is still not officially listed. So we suppose it's just uh, the way communication goes from Namibia to the double ho so that would actually make the countries one plus now uh, all of us know internationally uh, the impact of COVID 19 on economies stock markets has been huge mm. uh, after the break we show you an interview with uh, two economists they are from cyrus capital roland brown and rumay mostert and joe marie daddy spoke to them Joining us in the studio to talk about the impact of the coronavirus on the economy is Rumay Mostert and Roland Brown, both from Cedars Capital. Gentlemen, good morning and thank you very much for your time. 
Thank you very much for having us. Let's cut right to the chase. Um, even before the coronavirus in Namibia, obviously the global developments will have some impact on the Namibian economy. What are your impressions on that? So I think um, the starting point is that even if the virus doesn't actually come here, the global disruption that we see is sufficient to cause um, a material slowdown in the Namibian economy. I think our economy is already quite vulnerable. Um, we have very little sort of dry powder, if you will, um, in the form of fiscal or monetary space. And so there's not a lot of scope for stimulus. The main contagion routes that we see into the Namibian economy for the economic impact is through tourism and travel and um, also transport logistics uh, in general. So I think from that perspective, we can expect there to be quite a substantial impact on our economy over the next few months uh, in terms of the sort of first round effect. Now we have two confirmed cases in the country. Rumei, um, talking about the immediate impact with the fact that the coronavirus is now in Namibia. Uh, we saw yesterday in Namibia, for instance, cancelling flights to Frankfurt. What would be the impact on an SOE like in Namibia? Yeah, I think it's, um, I mean, every business that's with fixed operating costs that it needs to sort of uh, manage month to month. Um, and with these businesses, I mean, We've, I think with SOE specifically, we sit on much bigger operas, operational costs than we would usually sit within a private company, much bigger salaries and so on. So a decrease in revenue will have a significant impact in, in profits. And, uh, and, and I mean, ultimately, if those companies' profitability falls, and in those cases, we're already running losses, um, I think you can actually expect a bigger demand from government, which is their shareholder, to support them. And I think we were discussing just before, and we... Last year, for example, Aeromobile needed about 1.8 billion. This year will probably be a 3 billion demand on government. And on government that's already sitting tight on cash flows and, um, and short of cash um, in general. And that's just one of the state of enterprises that I think will be impacted by it. So mm. um, Aeromobile is the, the obvious one and, and likely the single biggest ticket. But I mean, that then transmits through into um, the airports company, for example. Uh, fewer passengers landing here means you know less revenue for the airports company um, and that can also become a, an issue for the shareholders then similarly you know fewer passengers landing here becomes a, a problem for the tourism industry uh, Namibia wildlife resorts is one of those those entities um, and I think you know a lot of how the tourism industry the, the public and the private companies handle this is, depends on how uh, well prepared they are and how much of a war chest they have um, at the moment, I think um, there's quite substantial risk to some of the smaller guys, and I think there's quite substantial risk to the less less prepared players in that industry. But I think the point that Ramey makes is critical that the I think the biggest risk that we see in the just of the economic impact is actually to our government financial position. So many of the entities that are highly exposed to this, both in the travel side, but also in the logistics side, your Namport, uh, Transnamib, etc., um, are state companies and the state has very very little um, very very little wiggle room after a number of years of large fiscal deficits with major um, uh, sort of constraints on cash without huge amounts of demand for government debt the state is really the, the place even without the virus you know without us having an outbreak here the state I think is, is very fragile um, obviously the state not really having a buffer um, debt is massive as it is, what would be its options? Um, do you think that maybe it will now resort to um, the long um, talked about tax increases, etc.? What does the minister have available? I think, I mean, just before you get to what he's got available, um, Monetary policy will probably not necessarily be the means to attack this problem and to stimulate the economy. It will need to be fiscally driven. Um, and, and I mean, there you start asking the questions, okay, so do we have borrowing capacity? What we're seeing actually on Friday is a lot of foreigners selling go government debt in South Africa. So sort of a risk of mood has taken uh, has take foreign investors away from emerging market debt. So it will make it difficult for now to, to, to raise debt. And expensive. And, yeah, and expensive. So interest rates have also um, spiked significantly. 
Um, but I think what, what, what Namibia does actually have is we've, we've built up a bit of a, a, a foreign reserve to pay back our um, foreign debt um, in 2021. Um, I think we, we've been allocating quarterly flows of about 400 million to, to those reserves. And I think that's may maybe an immediate place to go to, to adjust access cash for government. But it, it just kicks the can in the sense that come 2021, we need to have alternative plans in place um, mm. to be able to repay our debt and to manage our, our fiscal situation. Yeah. But the other thing is, it's not just government that's, that has um, quite a lot of debt. Our private sector um, and private households are also quite highly indebted. So if we do have major business interruptions, which seems ever more likely, especially now that there has, have been these couple of cases here, um, that business interruption can put a lot of pressure on uh, these leveraged businesses and, and of course leveraged households um, as well if you are you know, not receiving your normal income or bonuses or whatever it happens to be because you can't appear at work, um, then chances are that there's quite a big risk to your income um, on that side. And I think that one of the biggest risks would be something like increasing taxes. I think increasing taxes in, in an environment where there's this enormous business disruption risk um, will just cause a huge number more problems than it solves. In fact, we would, you know, I think, expect to see more the opposite. This is a, quite an extreme situation and one needs quite an extreme uh, stimulus response, increasing taxes as a fiscal withdrawal. So I think one needs to be um, very, very careful in terms of those types of uh, approaches to it. On the monetary policy side of things, because they're going to be this disruptions, these disruptions, I think that one needs to be aware of the fact that further interest rate cuts are likely. They may not help an enormous amount, but they may provide that little bit of breathing room if, if these highly leveraged businesses do experience disruption, and same with regards to households. Um, so I think you, we expect to see the Saab cut uh, interest rates this week. The base expectation was 25 basis points, but we think it's quite possible that they might do quite a bit more than that. Um, people are obviously scared uh, at the moment. Um, what would your message be to the private sector? Keep calm and carry on. I, <laughs> I don't think that there's, um, I don't think that we have a, a crisis situation in the country or anything close to it. I think that the, the big risk at the moment is, is this global slowdown. But I think that at the same time, um, the, the, f the fundamental under, underpinning issue is, is actually not quite that serious. It's in many ways the way that we're responding to try to slow the spread so that it buys us additional time and so on. So one way or another, we will come through it. It'll be a year to two years um, of, I think, a challenging backdrop. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a change in the global response to the virus quite soon already. What we see is Britain seems to be taking a different approach. They are looking more towards trying to establish herd immunity, um, trying to ensure that the virus doesn't spread amongst vulnerable people, which is basically older people. Um, they're not that worried about it spreading amongst younger people, amongst younger people who are much less vulnerable. And if a sufficiently large number of young people get it and recover from it, as young people seem to do, um, then that builds this herd immunity. It wouldn't surprise me if we start to see other countries moving in that direction. Once we've got over the initial um, kind of shock and, and the overwhelming of many of the health systems, I think that there's quite a good chance that we'll start to see a more targeted intervention. Now, if you have that targeted intervention that sort of quarantines all the more at risk people, your economy can keep functioning. So I think that that's, the, um, that's likely to be what happens. But at the moment, it's, it's just very uncertain um, how exactly it's going to play out. But I don't think that there's, there's need for um, enormous concern, but I think caution is, is advisable. Any closing thoughts on you, Romain? I just think the uncertainty is what makes it difficult at the moment. Um, if you think this, like basically the global economy is not just slowing down, it's coming to an up, uh, to stop. Um, a lot of things are stopping and I, and that's going to make it difficult. We don't know what the extent of things are. And I think for now, it's just better to try and carry on as normal as possible, um, but with the necessary caution. Not So don't be the reason for a further halt on the system. Um, try and, and function as, as close to possible as to your normal means. Thank you very much, gentlemen.
Then we a lot of insight there as far as economics goes. So we might see interest rates being cut quite soon, but pressure on revenue, profits, uh, operational expenditure. And uh, the big thing would, would, which would make it worse is interruption in normal businesses. Absolutely. And I heard Roland Brown say that government agencies will feel the impact the most because government doesn't really have much leeway at the present moment as it is, even during the pre-corona era. But I think the important message, and we also emphasized that yesterday, Brown also says that we're not yet in a crisis situation, despite the global picture unfolding. As long as we can curb the spread of the virus and contain it and business can continue as normally as possible, we should be okay. So we need to reiterate that. Let's try our best not to panic. And obviously also important, we are still in summer, winter is still in it. So it's important to, to also manage this properly before we get to the normal uh, flu period. Now Denver, in terms of events, a lot of announcements yesterday, uh, uh, MTC has announced that the Namibia Music Awards um, nomination event at which they expected some 600 artists that has been postponed until further notice. Obviously the independence, the big music concert that has been postponed as well. Uh, we now are now going to look at sport. I've been since told that the Sanlam Marathon in Swakopmund, which would have taken place next weekend, has also been uh, scheduled. Uh, we spoke to Dr. Rudy van Vieren of Cricket Namibia about the impact internationally and locally on sport. Please stay tuned. With us is Dr. Rudy uh, van Vieren. Now he's president of Cricket Namibia at the moment. He's also a former national player for Namibia in two sports codes. Good morning, Rudy. Morning, Johnny. Thank you for having me. We're going to have a quick look at the impact on sports in terms of COVID-19 now globally and internationally, Rudy. Uh, it's been chaos, basically, and we're showing you quickly on screen what we know about uh, the impact as far as sport is concerned where Namibia is involved. Now we know already that Rugby Africa's under 20 tournament scheduled for Kenya has been postponed. And in other news cricket, we're coming back to that the Netherlands tour from the 25th of March that has been cancelled completely. In boxing, our fighter Zakaria Lucas he was supposed to fight in New York in Madison Square Garden. That has been postponed as well. And in terms of cycling, a lot of Namibians always travel, travel to Cape Town for the Epic. That has been cancelled as well. And in terms of football, the Brave Warriors would have had a friendly preparation match for Chan in Swakop Munt. That has been cancelled as well. And in terms of uh, rugby, the NRU leagues are supposed to start on April 4, so they will make a decision at their AGM scheduled for the 28th of March in terms of whether they will continue with that sport. Now, Rudy, even yes. yesterday the news that Super Rugby has been uh, suspended until further notice for a lot of uh, rugby lovers. That's very bad news. In terms of school sports, just the, the uh, Momentum uh, Schools Rugby Leagues that's supposed to start a bit later in April. So the organizers message to uh, us is that hopefully they will be able to, to go ahead. Uh, next weekend would have been the any the Val Sports Festival at Vintu Technical High School. They still to make a decision. Next weekend as well, Swakop Munt Sanlam Marathon. And that's basically also may not take place. As far as cricket is concerned, the, the message that the Netherlands won't be coming for two very import, important preparatory test matches is, is bad for cricket. Yeah, it's extremely bad. Um, we, as you know, Cricket Namibia, our uh, senior men's team, will be going to the World Cup, the T20 World Cup, later this year. If that is still going to happen, we, we will have to wait and see. But for us in preparation, this, this was important. So uh, in terms of that, it's a big setback, but also in terms of revenue for um, Cricket Namibia. Uh, you know, we, uh, our CEO had just sold some of the rights, the TV rights to an Indian company. Um, so that's, that's, that's not coming our way anymore. Um, 
and obviously the, the matches, we, uh, we did a lot of work to attract families and to get people to the matches. Uh, very much looking forward to that. that. That's also that revenue is lost for Cricket Namibia. And uh, we are supposed to travel to Nepal later as well and, and that is still unclear whether that's going to go ahead. Yes, uh, we were scheduled to play or we're still scheduled to play um, Scotland and Nepal here in Namibia in April. Uh, but seeing that Nepal is a high-risk country, uh, we will have to wait and see what happens with, with that tournament. That's a ICC tournament, a one-day international tournament. Um, so we will need to see what happens with that. What is the situation in terms of local cricket, club cricket in uh, Namibia? For now, we have um, stopped our high-performance programs. So our elite squad and our our uh, um, age group uh, HP programs have been stopped. Um, yesterday we still played uh, club cricket in Namibia uh, and we'll, this week we'll have to consider what we do with the, with the fixtures going ahead if we, uh, if we stop that or not. Uh, but I mean luckily cricket is, a, is not a, a contact sport um, so we can, I think we can safely play cricket. Now if you do not know, uh, Rudy is also a medical practitioner, a GP. And um, yesterday morning I watched a short bit of, of Super Rugby and Nas and Brighton were, you know, on two different poles about the issue because uh, Brighton felt matches within New Zealand could be moved elsewhere. Uh, uh, that was Nas and Brighton, you know, said, no, we must uh, put no one at risk, etc., etc. So th those are the two opinions. Uh, what is your opinion? from the sports side and your opinion from the side as, as someone being a medical doctor as well? Well, I think we are, in a certain sense, we are um, lucky because we have high temperatures, we have low population density, um, so, and, the, and the virus is quite a sensitive virus when it comes to temperatures and that kind of thing. So th that those things count in our favor. Um, Look, if you get it, you get it. It's, it's uh, like I said, I mean, it's, just, it's like a flu. Um, what worries me a little bit from a medical perspective is our ICU capacity in this country. Um, so, but I'm, I'm positive that it, will, that it will not impact us that badly um, from a medical perspective. From a sports perspective, I think it's, we don't really understand. I mean, if you look at a country like, um, like New Zealand, um, they are very, very cautious, they are very um, proactive with this kind of thing and to move those games will put them at a disadvantage. Um, it's not a home game anymore if, if you don't play in New Zealand. So I'm sort of on the side of, well, the whole world is coming to a standstill. Let's stand still now for a while and, and ride this out and, and go through it and then continue like we've done before. Uh, very shortly, the last question, in terms of practicing, and, and, and we know we've seen that parents, especially with children or school, they're very worried. Um, should practices even go ahead with, in terms of contact sports, for example, there's very close contact between players during, during a training session. So uh, what is your, your view on that? Yeah, I think contact sport is a, is a different ball game, <laughs> no pun intended. Um, but uh, uh, that, that is where, I mean, uh, sweat and uh, close bodily contact and in a, in a scrum or something like that, I mean, uh, people are in very close contact. So that is something I would say you, you need to be careful of. Um, in terms of something like golf, where you walk and there's no contact, I think that's, that's, that's safe. Cricket is quite safe to play at the moment. Um, you're not in close contact, you're not, um, um, it's not a contact sport. So I think you must just, think logically about this. Rudy, thank you very much for sharing your expertise and we really hope that uh, the sun will rise for our cricket this year still, especially with the World Cup coming. Yeah, thank you, Danny. Very interesting advice from Dr. Rudy van Vieren de Denver. And he said, the world is standing still, so let's stand still with them. And I know, I, I'm a big sport lover myself and, you know, you feel so 
frustrated because you won't be able to watch your favorite sport, but we all have to make sacrifices, unfortunately, in a situation like this. Absolutely, but as long, very importantly, as you stay away from a scrum, Danny. Yes, okay. Blij weg, Eddie Scrummer 8. Uh, we, we yesterday shared our WhatsApp number and we asked people, uh, especially from overseas, if you're studying, to share us uh, some clips. Now, we received this one from uh, students in China. We don't know exactly when it was taken, but they are also sharing very good and positive messages. Maybe it's a good a message to share with our viewers. If you do share something with us, just provide a bit of context. When was the video sh shot and where exactly? And a bit of detail would go a long way. But thank you very much for being interactive. Let's have a look. Okay, so my name is Fanny Taleko and I'm from Namibia. And currently I'm enrolled as a master's student in, um, at the School of Government for Master's in Public Policy. And um, uh, ever since this outbreak, the situation hasn't been easy. It has been quite difficult, especially when we had to have um, certain of our movements restricted, like we can't go to the supermarket as much as we want anymore. But um, we still understand that it's um, all the restrictions that have been put in place were for our own benefit and that the, the Chinese government authorities and our school authorities are really trying to get the situation um, under control. My message to everybody in Wuhan and to all in all the affected areas, I just want to tell them that they should not feel alone. That we are together in this. We are all affected in one way or another. So they shouldn't give up hope. We are we are managing and it's 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 actually fun. It's something that's interesting. It's new to me. I've never done online learning before, so I am I'm getting the hang of it and I'm just happy that the university put these measures in place so that my studies are not disrupted and then like at the end of the day we can um, graduate on time and then go back to our respective countries and plow this knowledge that we have learned. Ni hao China, my name is Sadiq Chombo, I'm from Namibia, currently in China doing my masters in public policy. Well, my stay in China at the moment, indeed, I, I would say it is a magnificent. I'm enjoying it here, loving their culture. They have a very good culture. I would say, in my own words, I will say Chinese people are uh, people with a coconut culture, very welcoming and very, I mean, with a smile at, uh, uh, I mean, with a smile on their face. So, uh, most of them have been like family to me. They are very welcoming. So, with uh, that, I would love to say that with this epidemic, uh, or the outbreak of the coronavirus. I would love to say that uh, China is not alone in this. Of course, the with their uh, overwhelming support from the world that I've been seeing on social media, one can also say that China is not alone. And if I, specifically if I may have a message to the uh, colleagues in Huan, to my fellow students in Huan, you are not alone. Well, we are here for you and be, feel strong and be, I mean, we will be there for you. So my last thing is the message out there is uh, one hang in there, the world is here with you and this thing is going to come to an end. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Rosalia Tabopi from Namibia. I'm currently enrolled for Masters of Public Policy at Peking University. Since the outbreak of the coronavirus, the university team is really at work. More especially the international uh, student department, they are really making sure that uh, we are safe. They are even providing us with uh, masks. They've provided us with a, a skipping rope to make sure that our fitness is also taken care of. For the Wuhan people, and the Chinese nation at large, I'm just, I just want to tell you that you are not fighting alone. We are right be behind your back. And I'm sure and I'm, I'm, I'm certain that very soon China is going to win this battle. Because I know the pandemic is not only for, for Chinese people, it's for everyone all over the world. So if we fight together, I'm sure we are going to win this battle very soon. And China will be the strong China that we always know. And for the last but not least, for those ones that um, 
have lost their loved one through this uh, pandemic i wish you comfort and we pray that you find comfort in the lord i thank you chungwa chayo wuhan chayo chungwa chayo wuhan chayo chungwa chayo wuhan chayo chungwa chayo wuhan chayo China, Namibia, Otakonjo, Pame, Nanye. Then, well, like I said, we're not sure of the origin. We did receive it, and um, very positive messages still, even, even though this recording might be a, a bit older. And I think it's important as, as well. Um, we live in a world where a country like China is also maybe unfairly criticized, etc. And, and these messages are important as, as well. I agree with you, Dani. What I gathered from there is that one needs to remember that you're not alone. There are people hard at work. There are governments who are taking it very seriously. And that's also why we created this platform at Namibia Media Holdings, to make sure we share positive information, um, but also factually accurate information as it unfolds. We are qu quickly displaying again our uh, WhatsApp line you can use. That is not also obviously for people outside uh, our borders elsewhere in the world. You can send us information or questions. It's 0811-7010. 0811-7010. Uh, Denver, thank you very much for joining uh, me today. And we hope to be back with you at one o'clock today for another update. Thank you, Donnie, and thank you to our viewers. Share this broadcast and please interact with us and stay safe.